Who thinks you know how to pronounce today's word? I'll say cancer. Uh, back here. Uh, Hannah. Gullible. Gullible, everyone. Gullible. Everyone. Gullible. Good. JD, what's a part of speech? Gullible? Adjective? Oh, JD or JT in stereo. That works. <laughs> JT. JT, complete sentence, please. Thank you. Uh, how about the definition, please, Victoria? The definition of gullible is easily tricked. Great. Um, perfect. So the definition is easily tricked. Actually, if you want the, my first example, during the break, I put a uh, post under each one of your chairs. So if you check, there's your first example. Hand up if you checked. <laughs> 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 side of this you fall on, so there we go. Um, now if you track uh, either your paper or it's up here as well, my sentence. I will you read my sentence for you, please? On a warm sunny day in the middle of July, my fellow sister believed me when I told her that I had just seen the weather forecast, stating it was going to snow later that afternoon. Good. Why is this something that a gullible person would believe? I'll take hands for that. Why is this something that a gullible person would believe? Uh, over here, sorry. I don't see your name tag, but go ahead. Okay. Right, so it's not, it doesn't uh, snow in July. It's probably definitely not going to snow. Um, that makes which person gullible in my sentence? I'll take uh, somebody else. Go ahead. Sorry. The sister is gullible. Right, she's gullible because why? Because she believes that it was going to snow in the summer. No, Correct. There you go. So said, great. Other forms. Um, first, other form I've got from is gullible. That's an adverb form. Even if I didn't tell you it's an adverb, you should know. Why? I'll take hands. Uh, Jackie. Uh, because it ends in L-Y. Good, it ends in L-Y. And gullibility is your non-form. Here's an example sentence I have for you as, and I'm taking a uh, hand if somebody wants to read the sentence for me. Uh, Sarah, go ahead. When I informed my sister of this snowy weather prediction, she gullibly said, oh, really? I had better get my food crowd of the attic. Great expression. Uh, how would a person that's not gullible have reacted to that comment? How would a person who's not gullible, Sarah? Why would they react in that way? I agree with you. Exactly. So because of my sister's availability, my father is very cautious. You remember that word we talked about it before, about the friends my sister hangs out with? Why would my father be cautious about that? <laughs> Keep it friends, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll cold call somebody from table 13. I don't care who. Uh, oh, he'd be cautious because she might believe everything, she might believe everything that her friends tell her. Right, how could that become a problem? Her friends might tell her bad things that she shouldn't do, but she'd be easily tricked and she would do it. Love it. Let's take a look at, um, it's similar to, this you need to track your paper. It's similar to trusting because, Adrian, can you do that with me? Both describe people who are quick to believe the words that are actually about it. Good, but um, read just the first bullet there, she means. Trusting describes someone who is likely to have confidence in or rely upon others, who believe in the goodness of others. Good, so if you're just trusting it's that you believe people are good, you believe what they say. Second bullet, Jackie. Gullible just suggests that someone who believes in others without thinking about whether or not their words or actions make sense. They quickly accept information that is not possible. Good, so the key there is that it doesn't seem logical. For example, the people who reached under your chair, that doesn't really make sense. You didn't see me running around because you only had, what, 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> 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 uh, it doesn't really make sense, but you can think about it maybe because you were gullible. So which one of those words, trusting or gullible, has a negative connotation? Which one of those words? Uh, Justin? Gullible. Why? Because no one really likes to be easily tricked. Okay. Yeah, you probably don't want to be described as gullible. Good. Let's start talking about some examples. If a two-year-old believed in the Easter Bunny, are they trusting or are they gullible? Uh, Janine? Trusting. Why is that? They're trusting because they believe everything their parents say because they're so young and they have no reason not to trust Right. Exactly. Uh, I don't want to crush any dreams, but if you're in sixth grade and you believe in the Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, you know, if you're in sixth grade and you believe in the Easter Bunny, you're gullible. Okay, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, um, anyways, yeah, sure. Right. So who can give me an example of someone who's trusting but not gullible? And two-year-old is already out. We already covered it. Somebody who's trusting but not gullible. Uh, Shara, go ahead. Your parents might be trusting because they will take mostly what you say as truth, but they're not gullible because they can't do it. Right, 
so give me an example of a time you might try to check them, but it failed because they're not gullible. Table 7. I tried to say I finished my food and I couldn't finish it. Table 8. persuade them to do something. Yeah. Uh, good. Why is that? Somebody from table one? Because uh, something's Okay. Let's find them. Um, well, if you persuade them to do, why would it be easier? Um, because, let's see, uh, they're not thinking logically. Okay. And so you can get them to do what you want. That makes sense. Good. Let's talk oblivious. If you're an oblivious person or you know someone who is, uh, are they more or less likely to be gullible? Uh, and why is that? Somebody from table 12. Right, okay. Um, I'll take hands for this next one, so don't call out. It's been fine. Uh, difficult or easy to boast <laughs> to a gullible person. Table 9. Um, it's probably easy to boast to a gullible person because they an example of something you might say to a gullible person to boast when it's really a lie. Uh, table two. Have at it. Go ahead. Um, I'm so good at playing sports. I can play basketball, football, and hockey at the same time. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's so Great. Uh, and now let's take a look at the picture for today. So give yourself a second to read it. <laughs> in, this picture, in this picture, Garfield takes advantage of Odie's gullibility. So explain for me, and I'll take hands for this, why is Odie gullible? Uh, back here, table eight, I don't know your name. Uh, Aiden, because he believes that he has an invisible trophy, and he's really excited about it. Good, so what does that indicate about him? I don't believe that a trophy can be invisible. If you know this cartoon in the series, why was that probably a poor choice on Odie's part, given what we know about Garfield? Somebody from Table 6, I've heard from? Just stare at Table 6 until someone comes. <laughs> 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 That's question again. Garfield's um, a trickster. Text. No, um... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... If... Basically, I'm saying if you know Garfield and Odie and their relationship, why does it seem kind of foolish for Odie to believe what Garfield's saying. Garfield's a trickster. Yeah, he really tries to trick Odie. Yeah, if you fell for it, obviously that doesn't make a lot of sense. You're just going to act for a moment. Pretend that you have a ghastly cut on your shoulder and gingerly inspect it. Are you licking your shoulder? <laughs> that is not a ginger. You're not inspecting it gingerly then. Track, Tyleek. Great, great inspection that is done gingerly there. Imagine your pencil or your IR book is made out of glass and gingerly pick it up. Okay? You're picking it up in such a careful manner because you don't want to drop it and break it. This is why we don't give valuable things to Madison. <laughs> Which of these two sentences uses gingerly correctly? Richard, read the first one. Chidi, read the second one. I gingered, wait. Richard, gingered, <laughs> Richard gingered his ankle because it was sore and he did not want to injure it more. Chidi snuck gingerly into the girl's past to sleep in Paris to play Xbox, Xbox Live by midnight. Catch Ed when you're ready to vote. Excellence in ape today means really getting in there after some like parasite that's maybe worked its way. <laughs> and then you gotta get it out, you know? And in bold, you guys have grown up. So your horns have gotten bigger. Duke's up. Bold! One, two, three, shot. Why is he the right answer? Dream. I said D because generally means um, like softly and. So why would Chidi be sneaking gingerly in that situation? Because he didn't want to wake up his parents or you're, make a lot of noise. You're right. Why is A incorrect? Fisaya? The part of speech is incorrect because it uses um, ginger as a verb and could only use ginger as... Ginger would be a noun. It would be an Asian root. 
our word is not ginger. It's what? Oh, sorry. Ginger. Ginger. Yeah. Cosine, if you remember when Katniss blew up the career's food supply, shooting those arrows, right? Foxface, before Katniss blows up the food supply, gingerly sneaks into the camp. Why did she have to gingerly sneak into the camp? Krishan. Use the vocab word. Not Katniss, Foxface. Foxface gingerly sneak into the camp because she didn't want to get caught. Kayla disagrees with you. Why? Because the, she, um, she had to gingerly walk to the on site because, because it was like lines or something. It was like little mini bombs or something. Landmines. Like landmines under the ground so she had to do this and that. Okay, glue your elbow to your ear. Would you have to walk gingerly if those landmines were defective? Thumbs up or thumbs down? One, two, three, shut. Why would, why would you not have to walk gingerly? Julicia. You wouldn't have to walk gingerly because then it's not it's not working properly. So then, if it wasn't working properly, then you could walk. Then you wouldn't have to walk gingerly around it because it wasn't working properly. Yeah, it's not gonna blow up. I made the synonyms and antonyms a little more difficult. You have to look at the analogy and figure out which one is which. Deteriorate is to improve. Is that gonna be your synonym or your antonym? Call it out. Antonym. So deteriorate is to improve as gingerly as to what? What would a good antonym be? I mean, aloof. Aloof just means everybody look aloof right now. That's not going to be the opposite of like walking carefully. Cheating. Reckless. Perfect. What else? Oh, sorry. Can... Is okay, but not as good as reckless. Madison. Careless. Careless is better. Senseless means like you're doing it like almost in a silly way or like without reason. Careless means you're not paying attention, whereas gingerly you're being very careful, right? Before we get to your responses to your question, I want to set this up a little bit by talking about this guy, Arnaeus. How is he characterized? Like, how would you describe this guy? Really cocky. Okay, so cockiness is a degree of it, I would say. Yeah. Feral. I mean, like he's kind of a a wild creature of some kind. Sure, you can see that. Prideful. Yeah, I think all of these things really go together. How else would you characterize him? How does he treat some of the other characters? Treat them just kind of like dirt, basically. Like get away. This is my area to beg. Yeah, so he, he looks down on Odysseus, this kind of fellow beggar. Yeah. Disrespectful. Yeah, he's very disrespectful. Let's go back to the question that I asked you at the beginning of class. Why do you think Homer would spend so much time going in depth on this relatively minor character? What is the what's the literary purpose here? What does this serve? Yeah. Well it sort of sets up a foil with Odysseus. Okay. And so in like, what and, way? Um, uh, well and it's just like notes the <coughs> honorable characteristics of Odysseus. All right. Yeah, so let's go into this for a minute. I, I think we have a clear foil relationship. Now, in contrast to Iris, how is Odysseus a foil? He doesn't think things through. He's very... He's impetuous, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good... Impetuous, I think, is a very good word to describe him. Impetuous means that you just kind of act on your first your first instinct, so your gut. You go with it, you act without thinking. So we see some real stark contrasts between these two. There's a, a definite foil relationship set up. I'm sorry? Well, there's not very similarities. Well, a foil doesn't necessarily have to have similarities. I mean, they are always set up in opposition to one another so that their differences are highlighted. Sometimes they are very similar. You know, if we look at Antigone, Antigone or Creon were two that were very, very much alike in their convictions, but different in every other respect. But these two guys, there really isn't too much going on that parallels them. Um.